Welcome to this week's real estate news. We're going to bring two stories that he doesn't know and two stories that I don't know. And we're going to discuss it. We're not going to be just reading the headlines, which most, most people do. And that's the reason because the article is usually a lot different than the headlines. So thanks for the rundown. Thank you. That's the introduction. <laughs> I'm going to start with Ikea pays 10 million to terminate their Queens lease. Wow. Yeah. So they just ended their lease. They were supposed to go to 2030. And that just shows that there is a big differentiation between buying in person and buying online. So I actually looked it up hmm. and they 14 after 14 months after closing the store. So they were only there for, I think, about two years. And then the pandemic happened. And then, as they said, the changing buying patterns uh, went awry. So the Brooklyn one is still open. The Queens one has closed. I was just about to say, I would never have, I didn't even know they had one in Queens. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, like right in the Everybody middle. Goes to I passed by it. Yeah. 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 And they have a free shuttle, free water taxi to go there. I think it's free. I don't know. But this is very interesting, talking about buying patterns. So I looked it up. I did a little bit more digging on this. And it shows that their peak Google of IKEA was in June 2008. Not 2018, 2008. And it has gone literally straight downhill. So to Google IKEA? Yeah, Googling IKEA, 650,000 Googles or Googling, whatever you want to say it, in 2008, last month. It was 49,000. So they have lost 600,000. So it just shows that there's either more competition or people are just not buying Ikea. So I don't know about their stock, but it has been straight downhill. So it'll be interesting who takes over. That That's a big, big location. Yeah, it's a huge location. Yeah. And the last thing on that is it's right off of the highway. So it's visual billboard for people that are traveling into the city. I'd like to see that site. Yeah. Anyway, uh, on a residential front, New York City's housing crunch is the worst it's ever been in 50 years. Oh! Only 1.4% of the city's rentals were available in 2023. That is the lowest portion since 1968. Say that again. 1.4% 1. 1. of the city's rentals were available in 2023. Got it. Okay. So basically that I guess they came on the market. Yeah, I was gonna say only that's 1. not vacancy 4 though. Percent Would it came on? Okay. Were available. Oh, okay. So that's, so that's not vacancy. Extremely low. Yeah. Like that's crazy. That means low. people are just re signing their lease. That's exactly right. Yeah. I just so. got off the phone with someone where they want to sell and the tenant wanted to re sign. So that means people, you know, they are happy where what they did you are. Do you say to re sign? resign it or do they want to sell it yeah so we want to they want to renovate it which i don't recommend but they told the tenant they have to move so now this tenant is going against know. higher rents it it it's funny too because i sent i was i was sent that article from someone who's not in real estate and he was shocked oh this the new york times uh the real deal mm. and it was a big um huge news for the governor the governor touted it as a huge success, you know, that people are just not leaving the city as much as they did. <laughs> Only this mayor would think that backwards. No, governor. Governor. Governor yeah. would think so backwards. Like, not like they're trapped. I mean, you, uh, well, the only way is to buy. That's it. Yeah. Well, number three, talking about the governor. But how do you buy when you're spending so much money on your rent? It brings back the issue of affordability. I think it's going to, well, yeah, it's going to come down. What's your monthly payment? You know, like, do I want to make someone else rich? That was actually well, exactly. brought to you, me. You do make somebody else rich, but when you're actually thinking about first time home buyers, they're spending the maximum amount they can on rent. Yeah. You're requiring them to spend, basically, they need to make 40 times the rent, right? So they're spending at least 25% of their gross income, yeah. not post taxes on their rent, which is becoming, we've seen it. There's a big portion of their life is yeah. rent. They're the biggest payment. 
So the people that have, you know, a kid as well, which costs for that have skyrocketed, they're unable to save for that down payment, let alone post-closing liquidity. Yep. So with the higher rates, the higher expenses, no ability to get the uh, down payment, it makes like something's got to give for that. Well, the reason I bring up the getting someone else rich is because someone actually told me that last fall is that he's added up in the last whatever amount of years, he has given his landlord $350,000 in rent. Obviously it's a higher end rent, but he's like, it's crazy. That could have went to my own house at a low rate and you know it's one of those things basically so now he's gonna have to keep on re-renting yeah Yeah. well remember the guy we met last year it's actually interesting some of these people are renting like (laughs) some of these people are renting places that they'll never live in that type of luxury again yeah it's actually a downgrade if they went and purchased something from what their affordability is so they're okay then with saying oh i'll spend this amount of money on rent it's crazy Well, number three, we're going to go to Gowanus talking about the mayor. I mean, the Uh, governor. 421A is going to really boost everything back. It's going to be like a revival. Well, the reason I'm saying this is because (laughs) I actually saw in person the building that they're talking about on Nevin Street. It is gigantic. It, 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 like in Gowanus, it stands out because Gowanus is like these small, low rises. Nothing is built out there, really. And this is in Brooklyn. And the, so it's 320 and 340 Nevin Street. It's 654 unit development. It's massive. And now they can do 421A to sell out. They're actually doing pretty good in sales. So essentially it's gonna help 5,300 apartments, 1,400 available units. To to be honest, 5,300 units in, in Kiwanis is a lot. So, you know, it'll be interesting, but this is what we talked about last year, the way they're doing it. So 421A is essentially that you tax the building as though there is just land and not the units in the building that was there. So the way they're doing it, it's called pilot and it's payments in lieu of taxes. So essentially the city or the state, I don't know which one, I'm assuming, I don't know which one actually owns it, maybe the state, they're paying the city or state to have the building there. It's straight out of Battery Park City. So you're renting the building on city or state. So the state or city owns the land and you're renting the building and you're giving it, instead of taxes, you're giving this payments in lieu of taxes. I'm against it because that means the city or state owns the land without the building. And then I don't know how the banks are gonna finance that. It's kind of like a land lease. Uh, It'd be interesting. How, how sales go? I'm sure it'll go very well. Yeah. Gowanus, I would imagine that the they have a Whole developers Foods out there. are so celebrating that one. Yeah. Guanis, I wonder how long, if you typed into Google, how long it would take to get to that location from Times Square. It's 40 minutes. Yeah. On a good day. Well, the reason being is the queue is efficient. And mm-hmm. it comes from the queue. And the queue is coming from the Upper East Side and not Queens. So. Fair enough. So even, oh, yeah. so even less people that can make it out there. <laughs> when I was out there, it was pretty crowded. I went to... No, Gowanus is uh, exploding. Yeah. It just, like the word Gowanus, I don't know if it's just me. It had a bad... It, doesn't it make it sound like a swamp? Well, it was. Yeah. yeah, they had to clean that up first. Yeah. All right. Final story. Uh, Brick Underground going out of business. No way. Yeah. Wow. So I can you tell the people what Brick Underground Brick is? Brick Underground is a place where we get our news from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real estate uh, publication that has been going on for 15 years. And they said that they need to either sell or they're closing. Wow. So 15 hey, years. I know. You, yeah. We could take that. Yeah. Over. It's like Jeff Bezos buying Wash- Wa- WAPO. <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll, we'll dictate what the news is. That's unfortunate. Yeah. Because then that kind of just narrows it down to the real deal. And then the well, big guys you know like who Washington really does Post. have a good one is Cranes. Which yeah. Is, yeah. So Very there's a good. lot of good publications, but Brick Underground has always been pretty good. Yeah. Uh, it's sad to see it in this situation. I wonder if it's AI is taking over. You know, you just yeah. fire the writers and just do AI. That's probably whoever buys it. That's what they'll do. Yeah. I wonder what you'd even pay for something like that. I would love to know what the revenue is. 
to be honest, you know, or the web traffic. Negative 100, well, negative uh, 2 million a year. Talking about positive. Thank you for watching <laughs> today. And if you have any questions, send it over, share, like, subscribe to the see YouTube you next channel. Week. We'll see you next week. And as always, if you're moving to the city and are looking to buy or sell, then we are here to help you. Have a great day. And we'll